Okay, I think it's probably about time, so we can start get started. A uh, quick poll of the room. Who saw me give a talk with Steph at Flock last year? Okay, who's built the kernel, the Fedora kernel? Okay, that's helpful for helping me know uh, where to talk about, because today I'm talking about the Fedora source git tree. As I, just for a quick poll of the room, I asked about who had saw me talk last year with Steph Walter. We talked about uh, the elephant of the room, which was talking about the fact that the rel and the Fedora kernels are supposed to be the same, but they aren't. They differ drastically, and we went through a lot of reasons why they, why they were that way for some good and some bad reasons and why we wanted to potentially make them the same and had a whole bunch of grand plans and everything like that. And as a short update on that, what we wanted to do over the past year was hopefully have Fedora and RHEL be the same, just because if you've heard any of the number of talks, the grand story is supposed to be, okay, here's Fedora. Fedora is where we do all our testing. Everyone does all their work there. It, we find all the bugs. Then we go off to RHEL, we make it even more stable. We sell it, we make a lot of money. Sounds great, I know. But it turns out that that's not quite the story and we wanted to make everything the same so we could be more stable. Um, but what ended up happening over the past year is, I th from the Fedora side, there weren't a lot of changes that people would probably notice. Maybe a few spec file cleanups here and there. There was a lot more work internally on the rel side of things. Mostly a lot of discussion about what Fedora actually mean, what rel actually means. One thing I always want to talk about whenever we bring up Fedora, people always appreciate the Fedora community. Even if things aren't always aligned, people love the Fedora community and all the work people put into it. That's which is always great to hear. There were some minor changes for Fedora spec file cleanups. And one of the other big things that we've gotten over the past year is a lot more CI for the kernel and in terms of the upstream CKI project, which Red Hat has started an attempt to try and do continuous integration for the kernel testing. So there, there's been a lot of good news. And one of the th things that's finally come out of this entire project is the fact that we now have uh, a public Git tree uh, available. And this is a Git tree that matches something that's approximately what we want to see in the future versions of RHEL. What this contains is patches we want to bring in, various packaging scripts, and it's designed to show exactly how we're building, building uh, the RHEL kernel currently and being able to get that out there. Uh, it's, it's out there, it's available. Uh, it's certainly not public and there's a lot more things we need to do, but getting it out there was a good milestone. And the focus of this talk is talking about that tree as a source git tree and why eventually what we'd like to do is try and use the source git tree directly instead of going for the disk git tree. So poll of hands is that if I say source git versus disk git, um, who, who needs clarification on what exactly the difference between source and disk git is? <laughs> okay, yeah, so the, just for the, the 30 second summary for those who raised their hands, just in case, is, is that the disk git is where we end up with the Fedora packaging, and something like the source git tree is where the actual development happens. And there are lots of reasons why these are two different things, but the point is, is that we have two separate repositories, so we end up needing to do two things slightly, slightly different. And part of this diff reason why we want to possibly make these similar is, is that developers on a day-to-day -day basis really like the source git disk tree. They don't really want to deal with the disk git side of things. And this is the dream, really, at least uh, what we want to see is, is that a developer or maintainer is, does all their work in the source git tree, and then once they decide, okay, it's time to actually send this out for release, they run a few commands, and then a bunch of scripts or automation or magic, basically, moves it all into the disk git. And so the point is, is that the developer or anyone else never really has to think about what exactly goes into the disk git, because it turns out the purpose of the disk git is to be able to build an RPM. And I mentioned maintainer commands, but part of this could also be uh, done by automation. So the idea is, is that you'd have, uh, perhaps when you have an, a new release, automation would automatically create a new release and commit it to disk git, so you wouldn't end up having to think about it at all. 
uh, yes, this is, talks about a lot of reasons why exactly we would like the source Git tree. Uh, it ends up being, when it comes time to actually build the kernel, you can use the same build commands as upstream. So I asked how many people had, had, had built the kernel. And it usually when you do a build, want to build a kernel, you say do make def config, make menu config to configure your options, then you type make to build the kernel, then do make modules install. These are fairly standard instructions that if you Google about how do I build a kernel, you're going to find. It, from experience as a maintainer and trying to help people on IRC and on various forums, getting people to understand how to build a kernel the Fedora way is not always the easiest task just because the instructions are documented, but they're not always the first hit on Google. So having something that people are actually familiar with makes everything a lot easier for users. Um, I'll, I'll talk about this in a bit, about making an RPM with the existing tree. It's not quite the same as upstream, but it's something similar. Um, if we're, as, as long as we're also talking about users building their own kernels, uh, another sticking point is if people want to build custom kernels, they're usually doing it because they have one of two things they want to make changes to. Either they want uh, a new module, a new configuration option, or they want to apply their own patches. Who here, uh, for those who have been around a very long time, has tried to, to patch an RPM using the RPM build method and manually, yeah, that's not a lot of fun. Um, these days, Git is the preferred tool of choice for almost all development. And it turns out that being able to, to say, okay, I want to test this patch or even this branch, just do a Git merge into the same tree, and then being able to run the, the same tree, the same commands, is so much easier for people than trying to explain how to get things into a disk git, where you end up having to do more steps, copy it into the disk git, and bring things out. Really a big pain. And so it can it just makes things so much easier. And it really goes to this is what people want to consume and what we actually want to deliver. And it also gets back to the point about talking about going from source git to disk git, more opportunities for automation as well. It is, is, is that the existing build and testing infrastructure can work on source git tree as opposed to disk git tree. It's out there. And so that's a lot of the benefits about why we should have one source git versus disk git. And part of the point is when you talked about over the past year about, we had this idea about, well, okay, so Fedora and RHEL should be the same. Um, it turns out that Fedora and RHEL will never actually be identical for a lot of reasons. Uh, a big thing is because of the things that make the Fedora community really great and unique is being able to, to do things um, fast and experimentally. We, Matthew Miller likes to say we are the leading edge. And the idea with being a leading edge is that there's a fair, fairly low barrier to entry for trying new things. It, for, for the kernel is that if people come in and say, hey, this module is off, can we turn it on? If the kernel maintainers review it and see that, okay, looks like it's on, looks like it's not gonna break anything, we turn it on. That can happen and turn around in less than a day. The other side of things for RHEL is that there's a lot more process involved simply because they have different requirements. This all comes back to Fedora and RHEL are never exactly going to be the same, but there's a lot of things that it turns out they can actually share. Uh, they should be able to share the same spec file. There shouldn't be too much di different between them for no reason to have different build processes. The same packaging scripts uh, in terms of being able to go from source git to disk git. If we think about the, what, what we're actually shipping, maybe rel ships a few more files in there, but ultimately it's still just going to be the same thing between Fedora and rel for shipping a kernel, some modules, and maybe a few other things out there, hand-waving a lot there. And I mentioned the configuration files, and, th and this has been one thing we, I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out how exactly to manage that. Um, ideally, what we eventually want to do is to have both the Fedora and the RHEL configuration files in the same source git tree and make it very easy for people to be able to switch between them and test them. Uh, we're looking about different ideas about how to do this, but part of one of the, the ideas is possibly just to have one of the set for the RHEL versus Fedora 
be another kernel variant. Uh, how many of you have installed kernel debug before? Yeah, so that's a, yeah, I mean, you, you've installed that for, for building. And so the point is, is that if we can have kernel debug, it turns out it's pretty easy to expand on that concept and say, if we have kernel debug, why not have kernel rel or another name people want to come up with to talking about? It's another set of configs that peop, that's available, automation can test it, people can test it to try, to try and see what's available. And then, but the point about having different variants is that it does get down to the point about we're all, we do also carry different sets of patches between RHEL and Fedora. Um, some of these are different for good reasons. Some of these are different because people haven't put in the time to make them common. But theoretically, there's no reason why the two couldn't potentially carry the, ex the same sets of patches, at least just for building. And then we have a have a single kernel tree again to testing and make it easier. None of this is saying it'll actually be perfect or easy, but the point is, is that if we can get something that's approximately right to do the amount of testing we need, it makes it easier. Okay, so here's some gotchas uh, about the existing model, the tree we push publicly. Um, the tree that's currently public is, is that I did some work on top of that to be able to use rel files versus Fedora files based on the dist git tag. Uh, so the idea is, is that it's hard coded to say list uh, a rel tag versus a Fedora tag uses the, uses the, um, selects the correct set of files. That makes it actually a little bit tricky to potentially have one tree that can work for both. Um, this is certainly something still trying to figure out. Uh, another thing that is potentially a little bit interesting is looking at how Rawhide does snapshots is, is that the existing rel code didn't have support to do the daily Rawhide snapshots that Fedora relies on. I had to bring some of that in and potentially uh, look at how that's generated and maybe is something for Fedora to look at as well to make sure that's get synced up. And then there's the sticking point of, cha of the change log. Uh, every RPM has a change log, which is supposed to be updated with a description. And, and sometimes people have brought up with, well, if we have everything in Git these days, why do we have the RPM change log? And the answer comes back is that if we think about who the target of the RPM change log is, it's not the developer, it's the sysadmin or someone else who is installing the package and wants to know exactly what's changed and they're used to running RPM change log to see what's in there. So for now at least we still need to be able to keep things in the RPM change log. But it also turns out that trying to generate the RPM change log from the existing scripts doesn't quite work with rebasing. Uh, every kernel version because, because of the way things are structured. This should just be a to-do that's to clean things up, but it's just something more we need to work through. Um, more uh, of things that drift, drifted between Fedora and RHEL are choices about how exactly we split things into different repositories. Okay. Who has installed the perf tool before? Okay. Uh, that comes from a package called kernel tools. And kernel tools is a bunch of user space tools that get built that are part of the kernel tree but are not actually part of the kernel itself. And it turns out because we're building a set of user space tools, we end up into user space dependency problems. And trying to build that all in the same kernel spec file as a separate package was kind of difficult at times. So I split that off in Fedora to be able to build that special specifically, and then uh, Justin did some other work to be able to split out kernel headers as well, so we're now building that in separate repositories. And for the most, there are some, sometimes some hiccups with Fedora, but I overall think that it's worked out fairly well to have the core, just the core kernel being built in the kernel package, user space packages, user space tools, user space headers, and separate re repositories. But trying to bring this back together for RHEL is a little bit trickier. So we need to figure out how exactly to bring those back together. And uh, another sticking point here is um, sometimes it turns out we may need to go back from dist to source git. Uh, a, good, a good example is that system-wide package changes um, 
to clean up various parts of the spec file. This sometimes happens because it turns because there are very dedicated people who take the time to garden all the packages and clean up craft we don't need. If those are just going to the disk git, we need to make sure we have a way to get those back and forth and we're not overwriting everything there. Uh, there's also some details about secure boot, but again, so this is a long way of saying that we have a proof of concept out there, but it's not quite ready. And then I'm going to give a short demo of a kernel tree. Okay. This is the working tree that what I tend to do a lot of on my day-to-day -day basis. So start with a make rh clean. There are a, these are a set of custom commands that have been added by Red Hat kernel engineers to be able to do all the Red Hat stuff. Everything lives inside the Red Hat directory. So let's say I make a change to a kernel configuration option and I want to make sure the configs work. I'll do make rh. I will spell it correctly. And it's going to go through build and process and do a bunch of the checks to make sure all the configs are actually OK. And then if I want to do a little bit more checking, maybe I made some changes to the how things are going into the uh, RPM spec file I might do. Make RH prep. We'll do some commands, and it will run the prep stage of the RPM. And this is pretty boring. Um, you can see exactly what I am doing with large portions of my day. So if you ever wonder why kernel developers seem to get so bored, this is why. Um, we can watch this run for a little bit, but also use this as an opportunity to um, take some questions right now. I'm about halfway through. I'll talk a little bit more, but if anyone has questions right now, I'm happy to take them. Yes. Yeah, the, the question was about, was there any talk upstream about splitting the tools into separate projects, uh, perf, um, BPF tools, Hyper-V into a separate project? And the answer is, is that yes, off and on, this has been uh, discussed in, in that some, at, this, a lot of the, this happened well before my time I got into kernel development, but it sounded like this was kind of controversial about where they ended up. and. Um, for now, I think the plan is for, to, for everything to live in the single kernel repository. But I've also heard some other people who are, say, on the tracing side of things who are inter interested in maybe splitting it out. Um, we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens. Th there, there is some interest, but I don't see it happening anytime super soon. Yeah, you've just correctly described the kernel process about bringing stuff up every few years and then sometimes things change. Kevin. Uh, is there any thought to maybe building the rel kernel as like a sub-package of the Fedora kernel and the build system as regular? Or? Um, the question is about building the kernel as a sub-package and the kernel at build system as regular. I'm not quite sure if you're using um, the same terminology I was. When you think of sub-package, are you thinking of having it be in a separate repository and then you change, like a chain build, or just another package that gets generated? Another package like kernel, uh, kernel debug, kernel rel. Yeah. That, that, yeah, that's exactly what I was what I was looking at and possibly suggest, suggesting. And that's one of the ideas we've been kicking around to try and do things. Um, we don't have to have anything concrete right now to be able to do that. Um, you, you, you yes, you have exactly hit on one of the key issues in trying to figure out what to do is, is that um, the kernel build process already takes a very, very long time and building yet another variant adds more time to the build for things people may not actually want. So these are trade-offs we're going to have to figure out. Okay, this is actually pretty boring, so I'm just going to get back to the actual stuff people want to see. Okay. 
right? So one of the things that sometimes gets brought up is when we talk about making changes like this, it says, okay, if the kernel team is potentially looking at moving to a source get tree model, what does that mean for the Fedora community left to do? Will the Fedora community not be allowed to make any changes because it's all gonna be restricted? And I just kind of want to emphasize that what the Fedora community does is really helpful. Um, a lot of what we put out here is, I, the, that we push publicly is not actually what I consider core kernel development. It's a lot of scripting and packaging and other work that isn't always the expertise of the kernel developers. And this is one area where I think the overall, the entire Fedora community really shines in terms of helping packages get up to scale. There was a talk I didn't get a chance to see to about packaging mistakes and we were joking that the kernel spec file was probably doing a lot of them just because we end up trying to do workarounds for various things. And, and so this is an example about something where I think the Fedora community can really help make, sh make the kernel package better in terms of figuring out better ways to do things. Um, we certainly have our own scheme for generating kernel configuration options and how everything goes, but I'm certain there's better ideas about how, how that could go as well. And really, we just need help in terms of, terms of trying to maintain things. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is, I wanted to talk about the kernel configuration scheme that we were looking at trying to do. Uh, how many people have ever looked at the kernel configuration uh, scheme? Okay, yeah, that's a, a pretty small number. Um, how many of you have, I asked about how many people have built, built the kernel, and one of the steps people tend to do when they build the kernel is do make menu config to get a nice menu of options to be able to scroll through and maybe find what you want to turn off and on to configure the kernel. Uh, Due to the way we produce kernels currently, that doesn't quite work. Instead, we have a series of directories that describe um, what, what configuration options we turn off and on for various architectures. It's kind of out of scope for this talk, but I'm happy to describe it. But one of the things we we're looking to try and do is to actually have Fedora and RHEL share con configuration options in some way. And the point is, is that there's some number that are going to be common in terms of core features. Think about your file systems, think about your core IPC functionality, core drivers. Those are the same between RHEL and Fedora. Let's keep them the same. And there's always gonna be some Fedoras, things that are different. There's gonna be RHEL things that are different. And one thing is that we're potentially looking at doing is having the Fedora in common be updated and then just try and tell people, please don't touch the RHEL configurations. Um, Part of this is not, it's not because we don't trust the Fedora community, but because it, the RHEL kernel developers like to make sure they've reviewed all the, all the options uh, very closely because some of them can have unintended side effects, even turning on modules I thought would be safe that I've gotten before. No, no, don't turn this on. You're going to be doing something interesting. And so it just makes it a little bit easier. Okay. And Getting into a little bit of the nitty gritty details is that um, you may have heard both Brendan and other people talk about the idea about, okay, we want to eventually by the time RHEL 9 rolls around have everything moving faster and up there. And so the, and part of this is hopefully to make Fedora Rawhide more stable and closer to RHEL so for everything um, to be able to do all the testing. And this kind of gets back to the point then of, sure, we can certainly have people put up there, but how exactly are people doing uh, code reviews? Um, because uh, if, if you've ever monitored anything about the kernel before is, is that it still has a heavily email-based workflow, which uh, some people will try and justify as being around for good reasons. Um, I don't think is around for as good reasons, but that's a, best discussed over uh, beverages. Um, but the, the point is, is, is that as we're moving to a workflow that's say maybe having a tree more public, we need to figure out exactly how people can do reviews and do these reviews publicly. And this has been a lot of time what I've been discussing with people internally is exactly says if everyone is used to doing all these reviews and everything internally getting ready for this, how exactly we're we going to do this publicly? Are we going to do everything on a mailing list or is there something else to try and do? Um, we do eventually want to have everything uh, 
out there publicly. My dream of some sort is, is that there is automation out there that generates a branch when, say, a new kernel RC comes out. It does everything automatically, generates, generates the commit, generates a branch. The bot also adds in all the appropriate kernel developers to come in and say, hey, this, this change looks like it brought in some changes maybe in your area or added some new configuration options. And this is happening somewhere publicly. Those kernel developers get added. They can review and take care of everything. Pipe dream, we're maybe right now, but we still want to try and work through because the point is, is that we're doing everything out there in public so you can see exactly what's going on. Okay. Uh, this is about where I'm wrapping up, and I know I gave people a lot of big dump of information and tried to show exactly what was out there. And if, if I was trying, I'm trying to make it sound like this is what we want to do, and we're not actually committed to using this at the moment. It's still certainly a work in progress. There are things we need to figure out. Um, and I'd kind of like to use the rest of the time to see if anyone out there has any objections or thoughts about what else we would need to make this work and what would make the Fedora community confident about switching to this model for the de developers to use. Obviously, we don't want to risk regressing anything in Fedora. And yes, Peter? So I was just to say, in terms of keeping a, a, source, a source repo and a, a, a disk git repo, that's almost exactly what we already do in the run, except um, I don't have most of the rebate stuff that is not triggered by anything. Like we literally have a script in disk git named do rebase mm -hmm. uh, that removes startup patch and uh, clones the other repo. and between a tag and a head on whichever branches it's supposed to, and then literally just writes it from that patches that is the list of patches and checks it in. Yeah, and I think that Peter talked about how Grub has its own set of scripts to be able to do this. And I think that's actually a very good point is, is that part of the reason we want to do this publicly is, to try and, is because we're certain that the kernel is not the only package that is doing this or wants to do this. And we'd like to be hopefully to be able to use common scripting because what we have is a whole bunch of shell scripts and some awk scripts thrown in together to be able to tie everything together. And I, as someone repeated, always repeatedly says, I can't believe you're still using the awk script I wrote in 2012 for something. So, My yeah. Jumped, by the way, so. <laughs> I mean, which kind of goes to a, big, a bigger point, though, is, is, is that is there something else out there that's maybe a better maintained package or anything else out there. If you've seen the talk about packet or other work to try and do some of the disk get packaging automatically, maybe that's an option. I think packet has, is still focused on other things right now, but the point is, is that that may be an option to try and do things other out there. So. Okay, that's, that's a, a, a good question. Um, the question was about, are there parts of the real tree that cannot be public? And the answer is, is, is that what you, what you said was true in the past, but we had actually went back to the rail council and for them, and that we now have general approval to do most things publicly. So the point is, is, is that um, configs can now be public. The packaging, the Red Hat directory can be public. The general packaging, um, uh, can be p public as well. The point is, is, is that what we're proposing is things that are going ready for the next point in time for Fedora Rawhide. You're right that eventually at some point we will have to um, branch off for RHEL, but the point is that until you branch off, you can do all this work up there. Yeah, there's that, that. That is a good point about figuring out how to do embargoes and potentially hardware. And this brought up at meetings I went to a few weeks ago. And I, I'd probably say for the embargo, it turns out that Fedora will probably just continue with its own thing because it, when I'm talking about trying to bring RHEL and Fedora closer together, it's essentially just saying what we're calling the future RHEL is essentially just Fedora, but with maybe a different disk tag or other magic behind the scenes. So the point is, is that anything that was embargoed for Fedora before would still be embargoed and released before. As far as how pre-release hardware works, that is an open question we would need to figure out. Right. We don't. Yeah, I mean, the workflow just needs to be there. From embargo stuff, mm -hmm. you know, we've always had, uh, whether we're privy to it beforehand or not, we still can't commit the disk it until 
So yes. It's public, and then it goes out. But I know that that a lot of times railways are doing serious development on those patches, and, and those trees are used heavily long before the apartment. Right, and I, I I'd say that that's because the rail base that we're looking at is much older, and there's a reason to do that. So yeah. Okay, Jim. Within the CentOS community, we have a number of people who want a much newer kernel. Um, right now, they tend to either go toward uh, L repo or something else where they can grab something like this. Would this be possible to build this newer kernel for CentOS users to test and experiment with? Yes, what I would love to see is we provide just the source git tree and then this, this source git tree can potentially be built in any number of build routes out there. So the point is, is that it's covering all, say, Fedora cases, potentially a CentOS case, potentially abstract rel case, not an offer to you know, do anything, but the point is, is that it's out there. And because the, the, I, I, I sometimes undersell the point of the build route, but, but I'd argue is, is that once you have the source git tree, this should be something that there's no reason why with a few tweaks it couldn't build in uh, other build routes, which isn't to say that we don't have to think about what tools we're using to do that, but I think it should be a goal that this should be built in as many, say, forward-looking build routes as possible. Yes? Mm -hmm. uh, so what about kernel and, and getting uh, the rawhide? Because uh, at least for me, the rawhide kernels tend to work in, you know, there are edge cases which, or especially, for example, on the like, non-KVM hypervisor, uh, like, you know, it versus some virtual box on the field and like the PC hypervisor, you know, like RC kernel, RC1, RC2, RC3, all of the packages, but they hit the rawhide and it uh, sometimes don't, don't work. Yeah, I mean, it ultimately comes down to, I think, um, we're, we're trying to look at, at a core set of tests about things we can actually uh, test out there. I'd say working to try and get things like making sure containers doesn't regress, networking doesn't regress, some tests like that. The examples you're giving, though, for things like, say, virtual box is, is that if you can come up with a good test case that we can, say, plug into either CKI or the kernel testing harness, um, we will certainly take that to be able to make this more stable. I, I Just, yeah. And then there's, there's also the fact that if, if you've ever heard Steph Walter talk about this, his dream is actually to continue to try and push this further upstream to the point is that upstream is running CA on these things, so that upstream doesn't actually merge any of these things, so upstream is running the virtual box test and things like that. There is a lot of work to certainly be done there, but I mean, it, it's certainly something to, 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 to think about that in terms of what's actually should be considered gating or not, so. Yeah, um, I've certainly seen OpenQA work before. That's that's kind of a, a certainly a, a separate question. It's something we will work to continue to support as long as Fedora supports OpenQA. We'll certainly work to do that as well. 
Also for the curious, this is say what the output looks like when you finish running meg rh prep. So this means the kernel tray had passed the prep step. And I could sit here and do make RPM, but uh, given the Wi-Fi network, I don't want to sit here and try and upload, potentially upload things or to do that, but yes. Uh, have you thought of, uh, for the review step, have you thought of using pull requests, or is that something that is too contentious? It, the answer to both of those is yes. We have both thought of about using it, and it is very contentious. Um, th th there are a lot of reasons why we do want to move to pull requests, mostly because one of the things people are looking at internally is about how to try and make the kernel maintainer's job much easier, because there are a series of maintainers who do a fantastic job making sure everything gets in. They read a lot of email. They, re they bring in patches. They do builds. They do so much uh, valuable work to help make sure the rel kernel actually gets out, but it's also a fairly tedious job. And one of the things that we think pull requests could help with is making it so that things get merged and possibly tested atomically. So yes, we are looking at trying to do that, um, but like any workflow change, it has you know some people who want to make sure things don't, don't break things too much. So um, if, if you have suggestions about helping to move people to pull request workflows who aren't familiar with it, um, I certainly would love to hear it. Yes? So since uh, the kernel development doesn't use the pull request uh, workflow, isn't there a problem that like, things get forgotten, like mailing list discussions and reviews that go stale and just don't go anywhere because people just you know, take a video or something and they, they forget? Um, Um, so internally we use a, a tool called Patchwork to be able to uh, help track the patches to see exactly the status of those. And Patchwork is an upstream project that, all, that internally we've provided some enhancements to for our needs. But it gives you the status of things and part of it is, 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 is in fact that the maintainers are required to read every mail that comes in and that is a lot of their job is reviewing all the patches to help to make sure things come in. And one of the other things we're currently trying to help uh, figure out for maintainers is that who's actually responsible for making sure things get, don't get lost is that sometimes it comes down to the developer needs to make sure that the onus is on them to m making sure things actually get in. And again, this is something that ends up trying to figure out how things work, so. Anything else? Well, thank you very much for uh, listening to me talk about kernels for a while. I'm happy to take more questions offline. Thank you.